Over the past couple of years at DC Comics, the publisher has done a pretty great job integrating an entirely different universe of superheroes into their main comic book line. In fact, DC has been publishing Wildstorm characters for both superhero books. In Superman's Son of Kal-El, one-time Stormwatch leader Henry Bendix has been a thorn in Jonathan Kent's side. Over in the pages of Action Comics, Clark Kent assembled a team of authority superheroes to take on and liberate the people of War World. But today, DC is expanding the Wildstorm property even further into more titles with the Wildstorm 30th Anniversary Special number one. My name is Ariko Braddock, and today we're going to go ahead and dig deep into the issue. But before we get started, wanted to go ahead and encourage you to consider subscribing to the channel if you enjoy our content. And please feel free to go ahead and hit that like button. So to kick things off here, I want to read off DC's solicitation text uh, for this brand new uh, special Wildstorm issue. In 1992, Jim Lee changed the course of comics history with the founding of Wildstorm Productions, which would later revolutionize the business and launch the career so of so many top creators. 30 years later, the, the impact of the imprint, character, and creators is still felt to this day. In honor of this legacy comes a 100-page giant that pays homage to the past and looks toward the future. Part of this mammoth special will be reprinting, for the first time in periodical form, short stories from the acclaimed Wildstorm A Celebration of 25 Years hardcover, including stories by Jim Lee, J. Scott Campbell, Brett Booth, Dustin Nguyen, and more. And also included will be new stories featuring Wildstorm characters in the DC core line charting their future in the DC universe. All right, so without further ado, I want to go ahead and start recapping um, basically each story in the collection. So bear in mind, there's about 12 stories in this collection. And what I want to go ahead and do is speed through the first six because they are reprints as the solicitation text stated um, from the Wildstorm, a celebration of 25 years hardcover. Whereas the last six in the collection are fascinating new stories, um, bringing forward several plot threads in the DC universe. So let's go ahead and kick things off with the first story. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show off art from each of the creators. Um, not all of their Wildstorm art was available. So I went ahead and just grabbed the closest, most relevant thing I could to the source material that we're going to cover today. So with all those disclaimers out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about this first story uh, featuring Michael, Michael Cray, and um, that's called Death Blow. So I want to say a couple things about this story. It was just a kind of a wartime story featuring Michael Cray that looked like it kind of fell in the scope of the DC universe. Um, you know, Jim Lee is the illustrator of the story. And we also have um, writing from Brandon Choi, colors from Alex Sinclair, and letters from Dave Sharps. We essentially get some narration from Michael Cray. Michael Cray is in the middle of wartime uh, throughout this tale. And aside from, you know, narration and all of the various lines in Jim Lee's art, it's so difficult to tell what makes this story stand out in the context of, you know, a Wildstorm comic book or even a DC comic book. Also, bear in mind that these first stories in the collection do not have the ties to the DC universe. So I was a little bit let down by this first story and just some of the, you know, kind of surface level writing and just kind of subpar by the numbers art from uh, Jim Lee in this story. And also, I had an extremely hard time with the second story in the collection called Generation Millennial. This one is written by J. Scott Campbell, who also wrote and penciled this story. Scott Williams inked the story, and we have colors from Peter Stegerwald and letters from Carlos M. Mangual. 
I had such a difficult time with this story as well. I feel like for the most part, this story focused on really kind of surface level um, character interactions and also had just so many sort of cringy moments. I know that J. Scott Campbell is trying to build up some animosity within the Gen 13 team, but the way he resorted to that conflict did not come off as kind of nuanced or unique. So this artwork that we're looking at is a little bit older, and I have to say that the artwork in this story is better than what we're looking at, but there's still so many problems with anatomy, faces looking the same, characters looking the same. This one was very difficult for me to get through and a sign that maybe not everything in the Wildstorm universe can be rebooted with maybe the same creative team as what came uh, before. And maybe we need a new direction for Gen 13. I want to talk about the next story in the collection. This one is called Requiem, written by Warren Ellis, art from Brian Hitch, inks from Paul Neary, colors from Laura Martin, and letters from Josh Reed. Out of all the reprint stories so far in the collection, I have to say this one is my favorite. So I really enjoyed this story called Requiem, and I found that the characterization for Jenny Sparks, as well as the rest of the kind of authority team that were represented in this issue, was incredibly strong. The artwork from Brian Hitch is so kind of streamlined and beautiful. Uh, this is a great superhero artist who it, you know, is able to utilize or implement their artwork in so many different contexts. But I think just kind of like the bombastic widescreen nature of the authority is just the perfect output for um, Hitch's art. Really enjoyed uh, this story and everything I've read from um, Ellis and Hitch's uh, run with Wildstorm. The next story that I want to go ahead and talk about is The Only Constant. This one is written by Christos Gage, illustrated by, Dust by Dustin Nguyen, colors from Randy Mayor, and letters from Sonia Temofonte. So as far as this story goes, it has some really, really nice moments for a couple of the characters in the collection. Um, I, th this story is more so focused on the Wildcats, and it, it kind of has a nice recap of the entire Wildcat saga in earnest from more of a macro level. I really enjoyed the story, but I can see that the writing would need to change if this was going to be like a full series. But for an anthology collection, I thought this was just a great kind of recap of uh, the Wildcats property. I, I enjoyed this one more than I thought I would. The next story that I want to go ahead and take a look at here is called Backlash. So Brett Booth wrote and penciled this story. We have inks from Norm Ratmond, colors from Andrew Dollhouse, and letters from Travis Lanham. I have to say, this one kind of fleshes out Backlash and Team 7. I really found, in kind of my opinion here, that the writing and artwork from Brett Booth is a little bit more streamlined than I would have expected because I typically don't care for uh, Booth's art in several different contexts. But in this story, I really enjoyed how many characters kept appearing on the page. It was almost like... Um, Batman Hush. It was almost like a roller coaster ride of all of these different characters and kind of seeing how they interact. Of course, this also would not work for a ongoing series or even a mini series. But for the purpose of an anthology story, um, just introducing so many characters and kind of teasing their status quos and relationships was actually incredibly enjoyable and really good to get some of that additional context. Next story we're going to talk about is called Better Days. Uh, this one features Mr. Majestic, The Authority, and Jenny Sparks. And there is some of our artwork here from Neil Googe, but this uh, story is written by Dan Abnett and features colors from Carrie Strachan in letters from Wes Abbott. I also was not the biggest fan of this Better Days story. I thought as a whole it was written... Um, you know, with some kind of interesting directions. I love just the casual nature of the series and how we have so many kind of Wildstorm characters 
interacting with each other, um, you know, in, in, in just a more relaxed setting. I think it makes it seem like they're actual people instead of just superheroes, which is something that I think even the Marvel Universe could implement a little bit more in some of their titles. But I enjoyed the message of this series. I just didn't think it was kind of as complete or, or as kind of, you know, feature rich as some of the other stories in the collection. I did like Neil Gouge's art, and I think Neil Gouge's art contributed to that casual nature of the series incredibly nicely. Okay, so now we finally made it to the halfway point in the video. We're going to go ahead and talk about the next six stories that really do a wonderful job implementing uh, so many aspects of the DC universe into the Wildstorm kind of property and, and characters. I think so many of these books are going to be featured, or so many of these characters are going to be featured in upcoming stories. So this image is a Marvel um, you know, drawing for Daredevil, but it's actually drawn by Stefano Landini, who is the first uh, writer of this, or is the artist for this grifter story called The Grifter. Uh, the story is written by Matthew Rosenberg, has colors from Rain Barreto and letters from Farron Delgado. So sadly, it's very similar to the Wildcats title that DC put out. I had a lot of issues with this. I thought this series was too violent. There was too much of an emphasis on the violence from the artwork and from kind of the writing perspective. I just thought that the creators were going for something that was so edgy that I just felt like they didn't, they weren't able to kind of cut against the cloth and really find the substance until the final moments when the, um, the, the DC characters are reintroduced back into the story. So the last couple pages really made this one stand out for me. I really am curious to see where this plot thread goes and what kind of titles it's, it's implemented in, whether it be uh, the current, you know, Wildcats comic book. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed the end of this story and it kind of stood out from every other story in the collection so far, just due to its ties with DC. But this next story that we're going to talk about called City Boy and the King of Cities, uh, this one is written by Greg Pak and has art from Mink Yu Jung, colors from Sunny Go, and letters from Wes Abbott. So we actually have the artwork for this story uh, because Adventures in Poor Taste, big thanks to them, provided the preview for the issue. So here's a look at some of the artwork from Mink Yu Jung featuring Jack Hawksmoor. And to be honest, this was one of my favorite stories in the entire collection. The nuance that Greg Pak leads to Jack really uh, just showed off the you know, vast um, characterization that he implements here. I love this page with Jack kind of standing sideways um, you know, on the building. I think it's just such like a creative kind of framing uh, from artist Ming Yu Jung. And the, one of the most exciting things about this story is it's actually setting up a future um, plot line for Lazarus Planet. Uh, so again, we have really solid characterization from one of the most interesting Wildstorm characters with beautiful art. And this is a prequel story that's setting up uh, you know, one plot point aspect from the Lazarus Planet event. I was a massive fan of uh, this individual story. Let's go ahead and talk about the next story in the collection. This one is called Building a Better Bomb. And it's written by Ed Brisson, illustrated by Mike Henderson, colors from Hi-Fi and letters from Troy Pateri. So real quick disclaimer here, I'm showing this big Barda art from Mike, uh, from Mike Hawthorne. Uh, be, for, excuse me, I'm showing this big bar to art from Mike Henderson uh, because this was the closest I was able to find to kind of the subject matter here. But let's go ahead and talk about this uh, building a better bomb story. This was actually one of, uh, among one of my favorite stories in the collection. Writer Ed Brisson is currently writing the Batman Incorporated story and he was able to just weave in so many plot threads that I have no doubt are going to be introduced in kind of future stories within Batman Incorporated. And there's just so many kind of little teases and nods at DC continuity throughout this story. 
I think if you're really following DC heavily and you're invested in a lot of plot threads, you are not going to want to miss out on this one. Um, I can tease just a few of the characters, but I don't want to give away the story. Um, so in this, in this story in the collection, we have Eminence of Blades, Flint, and we have Winter as well, a.k.a. Nicholas Kamarov. But there are tons of DC characters in this story, and I haven't given away a single one. You guys need to go ahead and check this one out. It recalls not one DC story, not two DC stories, but pulls on so many current DC threads. I really encourage you guys to check that one out. It's got a really kind of novel um, characterization and really solid writing. The artwork from Henderson is just incredible. It features some great kind of framing of the characters, especially towards the end when the issue gets a little bit more violent. And the next title in the collection that we're gonna go ahead and cover is In Service of None. This one is written by Matthew Rosenberg and features art from Jeff Spokes. In addition, we have Letters from Farron Delgado. So with this title, it's another Michael Cray storyline, um, kind of establishing some different plot threads uh, for Cray. I enjoyed this. I thought there were a couple neat science fiction aspects of the story. But again, it's just a shame that when creators write Michael Cray, they're always focused on narration, wartime, you know, the people who are giving the orders um, to Michael Cray. I want to see this character in a different context. I feel like we've seen a lot of Michael Cray in the field with weapons, you know, taking somebody out. I feel like we need something that shows off maybe a different side of this character. I'm thinking that plot threads from this may be used in other DC Comics titles, but just as a whole, I thought this story was maybe just okay, as opposed to some of the other titles in the collection. So we have, at this point, two stories to go. These are some of my favorites in the collection. Let's go ahead and talk about I Am Stronger. This one is written by Megan Fitzmartin, um, illustrated by Will Conrad, and colored by Romulo Fajardo Jr. We have letters from Wes Abbott. I really enjoyed this story, and I'll just say right out the gate, of course, we need an Apollo and Midnighter story if we're telling a Wildstorm collection that's featuring an anthology with so many different titles. And I really thought this one um, kind of came through. The artwork in this is kind of foreboding and a little bit dark, which is really great for a story featuring both Apollo and Midnighter. I thought the writing from Megan Fitzmartin was pretty great here as the story kind of changed um, directions a little bit towards the end, but was still kind of able to kind of keep things on the rails. Lastly, just like every other story we've talked about today, there are some cool tie-ins to future DC Comics stories here that you might want to go ahead and check out. You know, we already talked about how Apollo and Midnighter are part of Superman's team in The Authority. So, of course, they would be utilized for other stories. And we get some teases here at what story could potentially be next. And this last title in the collection is one of, actually, my absolute favorite one. This one is called Zealots, written by Joshua Williamson, illustrated by John Boy Myers, colored by Sebastian Chang, and lettered by Wes Abbott. Over on our art here, we have a look at John Boy Myers uh, drawing the Zealot character. I, I really enjoyed this storyline. This storyline kind of pulled on some plot threads uh, from DC's Shadow War that I wasn't aware of and showed how it was related to the DC universe. I think Joshua Williamson is just so good at um, you know spinning new DC lore and kind of uh, you know mythologies to enhance the overall nature of kind of the publisher. And if you're a fan, if it, if you enjoyed Shadow War, recent Batman stories, and want to get more of a handle on where you know various DC comics are going, this is the place to go. I have to admit, I love Joshua Williamson's writing here, but I do think that John Boy Myers 
uh, struggles a little bit in terms of the storytelling when characters are just talking. Sometimes characters just, just, just seem too tense for the moment and kind of interrupt the flow of the story ever so slightly. On the whole, though, you know, John Boy Myers was still able to kind of rein in the artwork a little bit to work with Joshua Williamson's actually pretty, um, you know, narratively intense plot for the issue as a whole. So in a nutshell, those were my thoughts on um, the Wildstorm 30th anniversary special number one. I thought this was a pretty solid issue for DC. Unfortunately, a lot of the reprint stories um, kind of deflated some of my, my, my steam, some of my engagement in the story. But these last six titles, the way that they kind of integrate Wildstorm with DC is fascinating. I think that so many of these characters have introduced like really good and new plot lines that tug DC comic stories in directions that are actually different. The last thing I want to see is Batman fighting the Joker again in another DC comic. But when you stick a character like Zealot, Grifter, or any of these other characters, I'm already much more invested in the franchise. As kind of a last note, I really did enjoy the introduction that Jim Lee lent to this package. I really enjoyed hearing about some of the kind of golden days of Wildstorm and what it was like to actually be there, um, you know, to be like like a, a, a fly on the wall over at the publisher. And lastly, I just hope that DC continues to bridge Wildstorm into the DC universe. I think this is such a smart direction for the publisher to go in, especially when maybe, you know, the Wildstorm line of comics couldn't support their own ongoing series. But, you know, implementing them with the greater DC characters gives, um, you know, more of a direction for these individuals to go on in the future. So did you like this Wildstorm 30th anniversary special as much as I did? I want you guys to let me know down in the comments below. Thank you for checking out the video, and we'll see you very soon for more excellent comic book content. Bye.